What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down five different press releases and when you guys can learn to use each different press release. So I hope this video helps you guys out, I hope it teaches you different techniques that you can use off the line, the mechanics behind each technique, and the mental IQ that goes into being a successful route runner, okay? Now, before we get into this video, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you want to train with us this offseason, we have six different camps that we are going to be hosting in six different states across the U.S. We are going to be traveling out to Columbus. Ohio, and then Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, Salt Lake City, Utah, and then Los Angeles, California. So each one of these camps, fellas, is a two-day long camp, four hours each day, and we are limiting spots to only 10 to 12 guys per position group, per age group. This is not going to be one of those big camps where it's just a big money grab. We're just going to run you through drills, test your 40, and get you out of there as fast as possible. We're actually going to coach you for two whole days and eight hours of training. So if this is something you guys want to do, want to get some work in with us, check out that very first link in that description below. Let's get started with this video. So now, first First release I want to cover here today is going to be a split release. So a split release is exactly how it sounds. You're pretty much just splitting your feet, but it's a form of like hesitating and getting this DB to hesitate, but also getting this DB to show his hand. Okay, so I'm going to play this thing full speed. This is Devontae Smith with practice rep at Alabama. So he comes off here, split release, takes the inside release, works to restack and runs this kind of like out route or corner route, however you want to think of it. So a split release is pretty much you are bringing your back foot. I'm going to go over the mechanics first and then we're going to go over when to use it so a split release is essentially when you bring your back foot up even with your front foot and your front foot goes slightly out wide right so this back foot comes up even as we can see right here and you get to that position of balance front foot goes out back foot comes up now the thing about this split release is there's got to be a hesitation there the reason why we give that little hesitation is we are trying to get a read on this db a lot of times fellas especially when you're going up against a coverage where it's head up press it's not necessarily like yeah you want to have a plan yeah you want to have an idea of what you want to do off the line and how you want to execute but there are times where that db may not be showing his hand he may not be showing that he's going to be playing the inside shade or the outside shade. So you got to get a feel for him. And that's when you would want to use a release like a split because it forces that DB to kind of show his hand and we can react off of him. They, you know, there are clips always of, of Devontae Adams talking about how he approaches releases, how he approaches things off the line. And he talks a lot about how he, what he gives me is based on what I'm doing, right? So he comes off the line and he gives that same little hesitation skip, but based on how the DB reacts, that's how he's going to react. And that's what that split release is great for. So I like, kind of already said it, fellas, you want to make sure that you use this when that DB is is head up press, not shaded. I mean, you could use it if he's shaded to the inside, could use it when he's shaded to the outside for sure. But I think it is best used when that DB is in head up press and you freeze him, make him show his hand, show that he's going to be playing the outside, and then we can react accordingly and take that inside release. Now, the mistake that a lot of guys will make on this split release is when they split their feet like this, their chest will pop straight up in the air. Their knees will not be bent. They will not be in a good pad level position. And when you stand straight up like that, guess what this guy's going to do? Get hands, right right into your chest and jam you all the way back. So we have to split, make sure we're in a good balanced base. My cleats are grounded. I have weight distributed on the arch of my foot and I'm in a good pad level position. That is how you can get out of there efficiently, but also get the most out of the release and still cause that DB to show his hand. That is a great overall route right there by Devontae Smith. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job splitting, taking the inside release, working that rocker step and creating some separation. So now, second release I wanna talk about is a wide step release. Okay, so a wide step release, exactly how it sounds, very similar to the split release. What you are doing is you are taking your foot, that your back foot, so in this case, the ball's over here, so Terry McLaurin's left foot is up, so in this case, it would be his right foot, and you are going to be stepping wide with one single step outside this DB's frame to get him to jump to the outside or get him to keep his leverage so you could take the inside release. So let's play this thing full speed, then we'll break it down. So he does this wide step release, gets Sherman to jump, and then he's able to run this out route and slip back underneath. That's probably his textbook as it gets with a wide step. So like I said, pretty much you are just stepping wide with your back foot. Now, the whole goal of this release is to threaten a DB's leverage, right? So you want to make sure like whenever that DB, like think about the situation here. Terry McLaurin, he's got a reduced split. So he's the furthest outside wide receiver. He's got man coverage from Richard Sherman, but his split is cut down all the way to the line of scrimmage. So if I'm Richard Sherman here, what am I expecting on this route? I'm expecting an outside breaking route. No wide receiver is going to cut their split down to maybe run a post or to maybe run a dig. Maybe they will. You never know. You see it sometimes. But usually what they are doing is they are running an out route. 
But we also know when a DB's lined up in outside shade, if you're familiar with this page, that he's got safety help over the middle. He's not going to play man coverage outside shade because you very easily could just run over the middle and it's you're going to be wide ass open. So he's got safety help and he's trying to play that outside shade or trying to play the outside route. So that wide step is a great way to threaten him with that outside route. So we got to make sure that when I step wide, I'm actually stepping wide. I'm stepping outside of his frame, inside of my frame. And what that means is you're bringing your body with the cut. You want to think of it like your hip is attached with the foot. Wherever you step, you bring your hip, you bring your hips and shoulders and selling the move because that's what will make him think that we're just taking a quick speed release to the outside. And that's what will get him to jump off that platform like so. When you threaten him vertically with this step, fellas, he has to honor it. And if he doesn't honor it, guess what you could do maybe if you have to run a fade next time? You could just do a quick little kick step like so and just take off and run the fade. I guarantee you if you build on this when maybe you're not getting the ball, maybe your backside on a play and your job is to run him off and you just do a quick speed release, speed release, speed release every time to the outside and he starts to feel your speed, that can set this move up. Now, what also helps is having an explosive first step. What a lot of wide receivers will do is they'll line up on this wide step and what they'll do is they'll just take the step with the back foot. They will literally have their feet flat and just step with the back foot. But we talked a little bit about it. You see how McLaurin uses that kick step behind. Now you could use the kick step or you could use like a little prep step as I like to call it with your front foot or a gather step. That's essentially where you take, a lot of people call it a false step. It's not a false step, but it's where you take like a little like almost a step backwards with the front foot to give yourself some explosion and balance. So you could really throw your hip into this wide step. So that kick step, all that's for is he's kind of like essentially loading his hips up so he can shoot out wide and step wide enough to actually sell this route. So that wide step is textbook. That is one of the best releases that you can use when you have outside shade press, when that DB wants to take away the outside shade route. You can use it against head up, but I prefer it against outside shade press. So let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. So the second release is going to be a wide step release. Great release to use when you have to run against outside shade. So now the next release, and now if you're familiar with our page, which I know a lot of you are, um, we talk a lot about pairing releases together. So as a wide receiver, like I'm giving you five different releases right now. You may like a few of them. You may like all of them. You may want to use all of them. You may like one of them, right? But the one thing that I can suggest to you is with any of these releases that we're going to cover today, you got to make sure that you have another release that builds off of it, right? So that wide step, for example, now we're going to be talking about a triple step release, so a triple step builds off the wide step when you have a little bit different coverage, right? So that wide step, when did we want to use it? We wanted to use it when that DB was right on the line, outside shade and in press. So if he's outside shade and in press, I know that I want to threaten him to the outside, want to threaten him to his leverage and then go. But now what if I have a coverage that is outside shade like so, but it's like two to three yards off? Because obviously, what do you want to do when the DB is off? You want to close space with him. So a release that you can use is what I call a triple step release. So it's pretty much the wide step, but you add two more steps to it so you can close the distance with the DB and do the exact same thing. So we're going to play this thing full speed one more one time here. So he goes one, two, three, and he attacks that DB's leverage to the outside, gets him off the platform, and is able to run this whip route. Now, we're not going to focus too much on the whip route, just the release itself. So watch what he does with his feet kick steps behind, right? So that's to load his hips up. It is the exact same thing, fellas. So now instead of just doing a wide step right there, which is perfect execution on the wide step, looks the exact same, took a step, hips and shoulders are going to the outside, attacking that DB vertically, not stepping laterally. Then what does he do? He takes two more steps. He goes wide step, then he goes right left. So that three step release right there is just a way to do the exact same thing the wide step does, but close the distance with the DB. So why do you want to close the distance? Because if you were to just do a wide step, right? Like let's say you just did a wide step and he, and this DB was maybe a little bit further off, I guess. And he were to just run this whip route. There's too much space between the two of them for him to recover. You don't want to leave any space between the DB. Even if you get him to jump and you're able to threaten him vertical, we can't give him space to recover. So those extra two steps that he takes, like the first two steps right there are just to close distance. Then the third step is like the wide step, if you will, to actually sell the route, to sell vertical, to threaten outside of his frame and to actually get some separation. 
but the first two steps close distance. The first two steps close you down, make that DB uncomfortable, get into his cushion a little bit to force him to back off. You have to understand from a DB perspective, it is very uncomfortable when you got a guy going at you, closing space, and you have nowhere to go because it's man coverage, right? So if it's, if it's zone, it's a little bit different because they can backpedal out of there. But when it comes to man coverage, if you close that distance to them, close that space, that forces that makes him very uncomfortable, and that's where we can create separation. So the third release, fellas, is a triple step release. Builds off the wide step. You'd want to use it when the DB is outside shade, two to three yards off, and you have to close the distance. So play it again, full speed one more time. Great job with that triple step, getting that DB to keep his leverage outside, and then run that great whip route. So now we're going to be talking about, fellas, a uh, crossover release, or a double tap, as I like to call it. And this is another release that builds off of the wide step, right? So with the wide step, you were taking what kind of a release? inside release, right? So you were taking a wide step with the back foot, threatening this DB vertically, and then cutting back across his face or whatever route it was, restacking, whatever. Now a, a double tap to the inside, you can do a double tap to the outside also, is where you would step first with like a wide step, I guess you could say, and take a second step back to the inside with your inside foot. So it would be a one, two. So let's play this thing full speed. So now this situation, again, it's not so much like a release that he uses right off the line. He closes distance with this DB for the same reason we closed distance on the last clip. But again, it's just another way of building off your releases. So let's play it full speed. So he goes at him, one, two, uses that crossover, gets that DB to sit to the inside, and he's able to make that play on a fade. So let's talk about it. So no matter what it is, right, fellas, no matter what kind of leverage he's playing, or no matter, excuse me, no matter what kind of depth he is playing, his leverage always remains the same in terms of the responsibilities that he has. So let's, he's, we got like about two yards of space here because maybe it's, or this receiver's off the ball. So we got two yards of space. If I got two yards of space, I can't just make this crossover move. I can't just go one, two, and then have all this space in between us. Because then if even if I get him to jump, just like the last clip, I still got to restack. I still got to get up vertical. And there's too much space between the two of them for him to get any kind of separation. So we got to get into his cushion. We got to get into him. But now it would be no different if we were on the ball and he would be right on the line of scrimmage. I just wouldn't need to close the distance. I could do the same release. I could do the same idea. But the main main goal is to threaten his leverage to the inside. He does not want to give up what when he's inside shape? The inside, right? That's the whole point of him lining up inside shape. His help is the sideline. He wants to force us to the sideline. So if I have to run a route like a fade route, like a comeback route, I got to have as much space as possible to that sideline. So I have to threaten him here. And so that's the whole point of that crossover. So we close the distance. You see how he does the first step of the crossover. Looks a lot like the wide step. Second step back to the inside. Stepping outside his frame, hips and shoulders, actually threatening this DB with this type of release. That's what will get him to move off that platform. Form, and that is what can allow us to restack and get some space over the top. So that release builds, fellas. You got to understand how to pair releases and how to make these routes look the exact same. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. So this crossover release builds off the wide step. You would want to use this when that DB is inside shade. Could do it when he's two yards off. Could do it when we're right on the line of scrimmage and he's right in my face. You just eliminate that stem where you close space with him. Let's play it again, full speed one more time. Great job by that wide receiver selling to the inside and being able to create a ton of separation. So now, this clip here from Amari Cooper, we're gonna be talking about a hesitation hop release. So this is the fifth um, the fifth release that you guys can learn. So a hesitation hop is pretty much you would use it. This DB is a little bit more head up than I guess I would like on this, but it's such a great example of the release. You could use this if he's head up or if he's inside shade, right? So again, it's another form of closing the distance and using a crossover move, right? So we'll play this full speed. So what Mark Cooper does here is he hops at him, gives the crossover, and then he's able to create some space to the outside. So what's the whole goal of this, right? Very similar to what we were just talking about. He's lined up middle of the numbers. You can expect when you line up in the middle of the numbers, the DB will also be in the middle of the numbers. Your top of the numbers, you can expect that DB to be inside shape. Or excuse me, your bottom of the numbers, you could expect the DB to be inside shape. Your top of the numbers, you can expect the DB to be outside shape. Because based off of your alignment, he's kind of trying to get a leg up on what type of route you might be running. But you're right in the middle, he's going to be right in the middle. And he's forced to honor that. That's why I love lining up in the middle of the numbers if the ball's in the middle of the field. But again, it depends on the offense, depends on the preference. So this hesitation hop, what are the mechanics behind it? So you see how he takes, Amari Cooper takes this kind of kick step, prep step, balance step, whatever you want to say, and turns his foot right there. 
That's not a must, but it certainly helps because he pushes off of that step, and that's what gives him that hop. So a lot of wide receivers don't know the mechanics of this release. They just simply jump, and they'll jump with the front foot. They'll just pop everything up with their chest, and that DB will get hands. you got to be able to keep a good pad level and stay in an explosive position because if you're going to attack that DB's leverage to the inside and hop at him or close the distance— very easily that DB could just get hands and lunge at you. So we got to stay in a balanced position. So that back kick step right there pushes him out. That closes the distance, but allows him to stay explosive, allows him to have some balance and lets him sell and really throw that move to the inside. So that hesitation hop release, fellas, how we do that is we push off of that back foot. And again, you could almost like, it doesn't need to be a step where you point your foot to him. It doesn't even need to be this big of a step, but there's got to be some kind of step that pushes you with that back leg to maintain pad level, to get off of the ball and close the distance so we could sell with that crossover move easy. So make sure, fellas, using this against head up or inside shade press. So he attacks him, works him off the platform, gives him space to operate on this comeback and actually accelerate out. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If uh, you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to uh, leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback and it's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you want to come out to one of our six off-season camps for quarterbacks and wide receivers. We're traveling out to Columbus, Chicago, Dallas, Nashville, Salt Lake City, Utah, and Los Angeles, California. So check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out to one of our camps. I'll see you guys next time.